In this tutorial, we're going to look at some things you need to consider when you first start to use Risky Project. The reason for this is that the software has several options and configurations that work better for different types of workflows. Here are some questions that you need to consider. What is your focus? How are you going to score or rank risks? What kind of risk information are you going to track and report on? And what reports are you planning on using? Based on your answers, after watching this tutorial, you'll be able to optimize your workflow using Risky Project. Here are some general recommendations. Number one, modify properties and categories. We recommend that you modify the risk categories and risk properties using these menu items to have as many as required and as little as possible. This will simplify adding, assigning, and managing risks. Number two, configure the risk matrix. The risk matrix is central to how risks are assessed, managed, and reported. It's important that it is configured correctly based on the type of analysis you are doing. This can include the number of impact and probability columns and rows, ranges, colors, input formats, and risk scoring. Open the risk format dialog box to begin. Here's the standard configuration for a qualitative workflow. This includes labels and ranges, input and output formats, risk colors, and a scoring method. For quantitative risk analysis, we recommend the following settings. The default ranges are not compatible with quantitative analysis, therefore, the ranges for probability and impact should be more reflective of the severity of a risk. For example, if a very low probability equals one in 100, its range could be entered as 1%. Input type is show percentage only. This will allow you to enter risk probability and impact as a percentage. Risk scoring in the advanced settings is sum of all risk in each category and normalized. And this will provide the most accurate rating as well as the score will be in a percentage. Number three, customize views. Almost every view can be customized by adding or hiding columns. Using the risk register as an example, we can customize it by adding or hiding or modifying columns. In addition, you can create multiple tabs, views of the risk register, by adding additional tabs. Each sheet can be used to generate reports. From the shortcut menu, we can save the column layout for later use. Columns can be added and customized or modified in every sheet in Risky Project. Number four, project options. For Monte Carlo simulation, the most important settings are found in the calculations and risk tabs in the project options. By default, convergent monitoring is on. If you have specific requirements or would like to run more iterations to improve the presentation of the results, you can set the number of iterations here. Setting low and high results. If you're going to use specific percentiles as targets for, for example, P80, you can define these here. These low and high results are shown in various views of the analysis views. For example, in the project summary or on a chart, we can see it here. In the risk tab of the project options, you will find three options at the bottom. Of these, the one that you will want to enable is the enable statistical distributions for risk outcomes. 
This will allow you to enter risk impacts as three-point estimates with a statistical distribution as shown in this help window. If you'd like more information about Risky Project, please visit www.intaver.com.